perhaps I am on a roll today, but I decided that I would go ahead and do a second edition of the Dr. Mark Foster show right now on a somewhat different subject, but still related to the Baha'i faith. So um, let me just go ahead and get started. There is a condition which I mentioned in my previous video, referred to in the official texts of the, of the Baha'i Faith. This is written by Baha'u'llah himself. And it is, the book is called in English, The Seven Valleys. And one of those valleys is the Valley of Wonderment. In the Seven Valleys, Baha'u'llah refers to beings who exist within the Valley of Wonderment, mysterious beings. I never really understood until, I would say, maybe about uh, 10 years ago, who those beings might be. And again, I'm only sharing with you my own personal understandings. But I think that the beings within the Valley of Wonderment are guardian angels, perhaps in some ways uh, similar to the beings that are referred to as, as um, the, well, in, in Arabic, the plural would be a Horiat or Hor, Hor or Horiat, um, which can be uh, roughly translated at at least this is my translation, um, black-eyed angels of white light. That is my translation of Horiat or, or Hor. Um, individually, most people think of them as being Hori, uh, which is the uh, Persian singular version. Um, so, so an individual Hor would be a, a Hori in Persian, an individual an individual whore would be a, a horia in Arabic. Um, tell you a story. It's kind of an odd story, but perhaps interesting. I have not had very many visionary experiences in my life. Had some, but not very many, and I don't go looking for them. But one morning, roughly 13, 14 years ago, I felt something bumping on my bed. Very odd sensation. And I, I, I and, and it woke me up, I think. And the as soon as this thing happens, I heard a voice say, kind of a, a, in a relative, re, not that high-pitched, but relatively high-pitched voice. I'll, I'll try to approximate it. Uh-oh. Kind of like that. Uh-oh. I looked up, and I saw a, a an entity with a multicolored face. A multicolored face. Kind of like a uh, quilt. And I thought I was dreaming, and, and I guess in a sense maybe it was dreaming, although at the time I really didn't understand what dreaming was. Now I see dreaming in a much different way, which I will get to in just a bit. But I, I thought, well, I guess I'm dreaming, so I laid in bed for a bit longer. Eventually I got up, looked around the room, and I noticed that my my keys, I have a large keychain with loads of keys, most of which I don't even know what they're for anymore. Um, that keychain was missing. Um, I kept it and still keep it in a on a push pin in the wall in, in my bedroom. And I thought, what happened to my keys? So I checked the pockets of the pants I wore the day before, 
looked at, looked in the kitchen, looked all over, looked under my, uh, un, under my, my, under my, uh, uh, my, my bed, or and around my bed. Couldn't find it. So I, uh, the assistant resident manager, where I live, is is a friend of mine. Um, her name is Dana. And I went by and spoke with Dana, and I said, Dana, you are going to think I'm crazy. But you're the first person I thought of telling when I, this because you're, you're right here. And so she said, go, go ahead, tell me, Mark. So I said, so I told her this, I told her the story. And she said, well, Mark, you need to file a police report. And I said, Dana, if I file a police report, the police will think I'm out of my mind. You know, they may uh, put me in a straitjacket. She said, well, no, 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 just, just file a police report. You don't have to mention all the, all the precise things that you told me. Just say that your keys were missing, you think they were stolen. Okay, so, so that's what I did. I, I, I gave them the, the, the basic layout of the, of the thing, basically saying that, that, that my keys were, I believe, stolen. Um, this uh, officer, his name was uh, Steve, uh, showed up at my place, really nice guy. Um, we, we became friendly with each other, started joking around and whatnot. And um, he took down the report and he said, well, well, we'll see what we can find. Okay, thank you. Appreciate that, Steve. And um, about, I think it was either one day or two days later, I woke up in the morning and the keys were back on the wall. Now, nobody could have gotten into my place either time. My windows were shut, my door was locked, before and after. So I made the connection, I said, my goodness, it was that being that I saw. And at the time, I wasn't sure wh who that being was, but I realized it was some certain, some kind of extraordinary entity that took my keys and then returned them. I began reflecting on it, and that's what brought me to the realization that there are guardian angels that they are all around us. We living in this world, which might be called the physical world or the valley of search, are living in the outer shell of the valley of wonderment. Valley of wonderment being the realm of these guardian angels. We are in the most um, mundane world of God, the most superficial of all the worlds of God. And over time, what happened is I became increasingly sad. I began to reflect on the statement of Jesus Christ where he said, let the dead bury their dead. What I thought of is that there are people who are in this world, they may claim to believe in a next world or believe in some religion or another, but they really don't. They are of this world. They work for this world. They're their greatest objective is fame, prestige, money, privilege in this world. They are of the dead. Now, they can be redeemed. They can be emancipated. Anyone can. They have to want that first. I don't think most of them want that. They are content to be people of this world and to... Um, revel in the kinds of 
physical accomplishments that they make while they are here. Um, these wonderful guardian angels have been written about in many of the sacred scriptures of the world, perhaps almost all of them. They're called by different names. In the Holy Quran, they are referred to as as uh, as Hor, or which is um, black-eyed angels of white light. The the guardian angel that awakened Jesus is called Gabriel, same guardian angel that awakened the prophet Muhammad. The guardian angel that awakened um, Krishna was Radha, I believe. The guardian angel that awakened Adam was Eve, or in the original Hebrew, Chava, or in Arabic, Hawa, which means life-giving one or wellspring of life. Um, these guardian angels always appear. Moses experienced them. He saw a vision. People think of the burning bush, but it wasn't just the burning bush. What Moses saw was a vision of angels in the burning bush. People think of, of Zoroaster in connection with the sacred fire. But the vision that Zoroaster had was not just of sacred fire. The vision was of angels in the sacred fire. Jacob had a vision of angels on that great ladder between earth and heaven. Paul, the Apostle Paul, another wonderful prophet and messenger of God who, have, who called himself an apostle or a messenger, even though he was not one of the twelve apostles. Paul had a vision of angels while he was a prisoner with other prisoners traveling on a boat. And of course he also had a vision of Jesus Christ himself while he was on the Damascus Highway, the road to Damascus. So to me, these wonderful angels are the mediators between this world and the world to come. They do a lot more than that. I believe myself that these angels are everlasting. They have no beginning and they have no end. They have always existed and they will always exist. They are timeless, exalted beings. One rather odd aspect of the thing, and this maybe will add more of a personal aspect to it, which I realize will sound kind of weird, but that doesn't bother me. If you've listened to any of my earlier, or some of my earlier uh, podcasts, you, you know that I am uh, autistic. And I was very, very autistic when I was a child. I'm through the blessings of God, I have been able to deal with many of those things, and now I'm barely, if, if at all, noticeable to most people as being autistic. Although I still am autistic, as I know what goes on inside my head. But nevertheless, um, autists have a very, very low rate of marriage, um, much less than the general population. It's, it's tough. It's tough. Relationships can be tough for autists. I'm in that category. Um, I'm 64 years old, and I've never been married. And I don't want to get married, to be honest. I have no interest in getting married. I don't think that marriage for me would work. Although, perhaps I'm wrong. Maybe it would now, and it wouldn't have when I was younger. But my sense is that it wouldn't work. I'm I, not only because of my autism, which I've largely overcome, at least the, the more noticeable aspects of it, but just my out of habit. You know, when you've lived alone your entire life, 
it's hard to sort of go and say, okay, now I'm going to get married and have somebody living with me. I just don't see how I would do that. Plus, I think the time that we're living in, which I'll discuss in a future podcast, um, is not really the right time to, to get married. It's Now is a time of preparation for going into the next world. When we go into the next next world, we will be with those guardian angels. We will meet them, I think, as we meet them each night in our dreams, unconsciously, but we will be conscious in, our, in the next world, and so we will consciously meet them. We will converse with them. We will meet with all of our friends that we had in this world, and people that perhaps we wish would have been our friends, people from previous centuries or millennia. They're all there. All the prophets are there. Um, it's a wonderful, splendorous world which lies beyond the Valley of Wonderment. And since the guardian angels are on Jacob's ladder, they have the ability, it seems to me, to go back and forth between this world and the world to come, the next world, the world after death. So... Um, I leave it there. Uh, that is the conclusion of this podcast. Uh, God bless all of you, and and uh, have a have a good one. Take care.